They're defining moments in each of our lives. And I'd like for us to think about when we receive inspiration, what do we do with it? Does it actually change our lives? Or do we just get back into the autopilot mode that we're normally on? And for me personally, growing up uh, in a middle class uh, suburban community in Indiana, you know, I had a number of inspirational moments, but one of them it was my experience with Sheikh Hamza Yusuf. And being someone who grew up around mostly, you know, white Americans in, uh, in Indianapolis, uh, I, I was I very much connected with Sheikh Hamza Yusuf's story. But what struck me as amazingly different was this man, he could have just had a regular, typical American life, and he decided that that wasn't enough for him. He decided that he wanted to answer his deepest questions, that he wanted to travel the world and learn the language of, uh, of the Quran, language of Arabic, which now he speaks better than many Arabs. That actually triggered something in me to say that, hey, what, what could I have for my life? What more could I have if, if I was w willing to take the risk, if I was willing to make the sacrifice? And so this took me on a journey uh, across the next few years. Uh, while I was still doing my studies at University of Michigan and then at Harvard, I, I spent intermittent periods of time traveling to Morocco, uh, I spent uh, about a year in Syria, I was in Jordan, and beautiful places, and I learned a lot while I was there in addition to my studies. But what really transformed me, and I feel I take away from that entire experience, was learning the language of the Quran, Arabic. Life before Arabic is not like life after Arabic. And just standing in Tarawih prayer, and at one, one point I, I realized, it just struck me while I was in prayer, that I'm actually understanding what I'm, say, I'm hearing. I'm actually, I mean, this was something that was a dream for me. It wasn't something that I, I thought could be achieved, but it was something that I was actually in prayer and I'm able to listen to what the Imam is saying. And instead of just, you know, liking it and having a feel good moment because it was beautiful and it was Quran, I know this is divine words, I was actually able to follow the story. That was very transformative for me. And I thank Sheikh Hamza Yusuf for that. And I'd like for each and every one of us to think, what have been those moments that have inspired us to do more? Whether it's to learn Arabic or do something else with our lives that we can capture and we can transform into something that can be life-changing. And Fawake, we're trying to help students. We're trying to help those who have a goal of understanding the Quran uh, in a more intimate, personal way, instead of through the barrier of a translation or through someone else's interpretation or someone else's opinion, but actually have a personal loving relationship with this message, we're trying to help them make that journey. And it doesn't have to be one that requires you to go overseas. It doesn't have to be one that requires you to spend years and years of study or make uh, immense sacrifices to be away from your family. We're trying to create a model in which in a summer, in one month or in a year, spending three hours, just three hours a week, that we hope to take students from a point in which they are, like me, standing in Tarawih prayer and just having you know, a feel-good moment and knowing the blessings they're getting but not understanding a word of what they're saying, to becoming ones that are standing in, these, in prayer or picking up the Quran or actually just listening to the dua uh, after the prayer is, is done or making our own dua and actually having that personal experience in which we know what we're saying and we're being transformed by that. We want to help people make that journey and make that transformation in their own lives. And, and this is something that I'd like to share with others and that's the reason we set up the Fawaki Institute.